Anybody have any um, thing they want to share? Any wins or any successes that they want to brag about? Here's your platform. I well, got a I'm... book. Oh. Yay. Me too. Thanks. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, both of you. Who wants to go first? Go ahead, go ahead Tom. <laughs> oh, okay, Jenny. Yeah, I got a book. It's a uh, royalty share book, but it's uh, my first ACX book. I've been working hmm. on pamphlets and booklets for uh, some other companies, uh, not for ACX, but I've been, uh, I got my first book for ACX, so I'm hey. excited about it. Which, which book is it, since we probably all look at the same books? Oh, it's 50 ways, 50 things to know to play guitar. Oh, oh that sounds fun. Interesting. Yeah, it's one of those 50 things to know book books. That's cool. Are you enjoying it? Do you play guitar? Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, cool. Oh, I love that. Okay, what yeah. about you, Jenny? Uh, mine, like Tom, it's my first book on ACX. Yay. I've done stuff, some books for friends and stuff, but this is the first booking with a stranger. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a kind of a, a fantasy, hmm. um, Guardians of Grey World. And, you know, a, kind of a, like a Narnia thing, you know, a little boy goes through a painting into another world oh, where giants and fairies and things has an adventure. Turns out he's called to save the world. Yeah. Well, that's not how that works. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a fantasy fan at all, Jenny? Pardon? Pardon? Are you a fantasy fan or... I like fantasy. Yes, yes. I definitely grew up on Narnia and Tolkien and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. right up my alley. What are some of the names in there? Those are the ones that always stump me. <laughs> How do you pronounce these crazy fantasy names? Well, he, he actually, yeah, very wisely, he told me that he planned his book to keep the difficult names to a minimum. So oh, there's only a, kind of a short, well... There's a fairly lengthy list that I asked him about just to make sure, but they're fairly self-explanatory how to pronounce them. So it's not hmm. that difficult. Oh, oh, that's good. That makes yeah. it so much easier. Yeah. Anybody else? So, uh, quick share here. Uh, chapter one of the book I'm working on, my first book is on the mm -hmm. day. So I'm excited about that. You got chapter one done? Chapter one is done. All right. That's a good one. Kind of hard to hear you, Norman. Let me turn up your name there. How's that? That's a little better. better. Definitely okay. better. Well, I'm currently uploading the corrections to my first book, and hopefully tonight I'll hit uh, done. Yay! Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And what kind of book is that? That one's a romance. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. nice. From ACX? From ACX. Which one? And what's the book so we can look for it? it? It's called Hugs and Quiches. <laughs> but I great. saw that one on there. It's a cozy romance, right? This one's not a cozy. It's huh. uh, no, it, but it's got, you know, cooking and stuff. It's got a lot of my interests. So I thought oh, it was fun. And, but um, I, I'm going to do it under a pseudonym. Oh. And have you thought of a good pseudonym? Yeah, I'm going to, I use, when I was a kid, I, you know, would do stuff, but um, Caroline Stacy is what I use, so. Well, that's got a good ring good. to it. Good. Yeah. It sounds a lot less e ethnic than Carrie Sisselman. So. <laughs> <laughs> we are who we are. Yeah. Yeah. So we I have do that new... too, Carrie. Uh, oh, you do? Carrie, What's I do yours? that too for, like, I have a pseudonym as well. Hmm. So then that way, kind of the mainstream and then the romance on the other side. So then that way, if someone's looking for their child and they pull up a book, it's, you know, Debbie does math, not Debbie does Dallas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I think you you, your name looks clear. perfect for romance. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Say your, name, say your name out loud. It's Krista DeCarl. 
Krista DeCaro. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> <laughs> <way> you said <laughs> it. <laughs> Well, we have a, so a couple of new faces. So Krista has kind of been part of our group on the peripheral. So this is our first time seeing her. So welcome. Thank you. And then we have Sunny McMurtry and she Hi, is the one that hosts um, voiceover or voice coaching on Tuesday nights. And she does a half hour free coaching session. I'm wow. actually taking voice lessons from her as well. She's my nice. new coach Excellent. and she's learning audacity. So she wanted to be part of our group. <laughs> and Valerie Welcome is to... my audacity coach. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you know, humbly, humbly. And a bunch um, so of us, welcome. A bunch of what? us did sunny session. Uh, not oh, this... good. How Thank many you. did go? I did. I did. Oh, awesome. Hey, cool. Yeah. How many will now? <laughs> yeah, you better go now, hey Dave. Norman. Yeah. If you could send the link, that would be great. Yeah, it's in um the minutes I sent you from for this meeting. And there it's in there. And Sunny will send out uh, a notice too for tomorrow night, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's get started. And whoever wants to join can just come in. So my name's Valerie Moss. I host this group for everybody. Um, it's funny because this is our seventh session now, and I get less and less questions from the group as we go. So I don't know if this might just turn into a social session so we can just feed off each other. But last session, we, I'll just kind of go through a recap of the minutes. And if anybody wants to stop me or ask questions or give feedback on what was discussed, that would be great. So we did um, some quick tours of booth spaces. So those of you who watched the recap from last week was kind of fun. Did you get your booth set up, Carrie? Your whisper room? Oh, you did. I did, and I put the foam the foam in. I had bought some foam on Amazon, um, the Oralex. Oh. I put that in. And so I do have it set up. I'm not sitting in it right now because I only have a, a folding chair in there. Oh, yeah. People stand or sit. I see Norman stands, it looks like, but no. Uh, I actually, I'll do a quick, I'm standing now, but I have a nice tall chair. I don't oh, know yeah, yeah. See black on black there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but because I have a, I have a lot of back issues. Uh, I tend to like the taller bar stool type chairs. Cool. Yeah. But so but everybody else. Um, yeah, I sit, but you know what? I just bought myself a new stool as well. Um, I can't show you, but it's just right, it was like right over there behind me. Um, but I bought an old fashioned piano stool. So I have to oh, sit like super up straight and it rotates so I can slouch or yeah. And it's very cool. It it's really, it's really working out really great. Plus I can kind of tuck it underneath my studio table. So it doesn't take up like a pile of room in here. So I can kind of move it out of the way too. Well, if anybody wanted a tour of my whisper room, I would take the, the camera there, but not if nobody. Cares. Yes, we do. Oh. Yeah, we want to yeah. see it. We totally want you to brag and we want to see what it looks like. <laughs> I dream right. of a whisper room. I know. Well, I, I got it. I'm sorry. I got it on uh, Craigslist for $800. Oh, oh my gosh. And what a great guys, deal. Here's, here's the whisper room. It's okay. just the 42 by 42 size. And I have in here right now, um, it's got a window. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's got the, I don't know, can you see the, the Orlex foam? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And from Ikea, I got this little desk that fits in it perfectly as though oh, it were cute. made for the space. Is it purple? So there's that. The purple, yeah, the Orlex is purple. I mm. saw it on Amazon. It said it was, it didn't say used, it said, um, like open box 
and it was $60. And I said, I wrote them a message and I said, is that for one sheet right. or is that for what? $60. And nobody responded. So I, I just sent my $60 and it was 12 sheets. Huh. Wow. Nice. Wow. That's a great deal. And you sound really good in there, Carrie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. I haven't reported anything because the pickups I was doing, I was doing, um, I was using my old setups. Yeah, of course. Thing. Stay consistent. Yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. so that's that. And it has the ventilation. That's what it looks like, you know. Mm. Do you feel claustrophobic in there at all? No, not really. But, you mm. know, I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. I, I could be in a little box my whole life and be just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So, so you're right at home. Yeah. Put a coffee pot, a little hot plate in there. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah, a coffee pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was that was it. This is where I've been working. Was in this little cave here I built. Mm -hmm. So I'll go back in the cave for now. That's but. good. Anybody else want to show their space, or anybody else want to? No? Well. Uh -huh question about space because you can see i got foam three 360 again mm -hmm. got it off amazon but uh on the acx um facebook group um uh, i had someone reach out and uh, was willing to uh do a check on my audio because i was trying to do some mastering mm -hmm. and they were going to give me some tips so i sent them a five minute sample uh they said i had a really high sound floor now I got that's probably the phone 360 as I said so I'm trying to figure out how to drop that sound floor what is your sound for floor reading Norman uh, is it, that's on the other computer give me a second here sure I know I'm under 60 dB um oh so you're like sitting in the 50s uh, no, I, I'm sitting in the sixties. Well, you should be fine then. You have to be minus 60 to pass ACX. Okay. Th that's what I thought. But the fact that, um, the guy who checked it has done like 20 books as a editor. And he's like, yeah, your sound floor is way high. And hmm. like, 63 is not that high. I mean, you're getting close, but I wouldn't be concerned about that. Okay. Um, one thing that you could try, though, is... Oh, Dave's showing us his. I'm like, why do we see Dave on two screens? Nice. That looks really great. Yeah. I guess had I used my phone, I would have made people less seasick. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Mm. It was fine. Over, over, looking over it all is this terrible old picture of me on the radio. Hmm. Just to re mm -hmm. Oh, nice. cool. <laughs> good mustache. Now, is that from the disco anyway, days or the 80s yeah. days there? Get out of this. Okay. If that's an actual bedroom or something. It looked yeah, like. Yeah, that's, that's a walk in like closet. Room. Oh, walk in closet. Walk in mm -hmm. closet. Okay. That is really weird seeing you go from one screen to the other. I know. <laughs> it's super weird, Dave. Okay. Well, that's cool. Anybody else want to show their space? No? Maybe next time. And those were just uh, these uh, hang, on, hang up things with grommets. Yep. The, that are a little like bit better than panels that are bit yeah they're panels they're you know they're they're sand panels mm. as opposed to just moving moving uh, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. good yeah. i just bought these i have to take my headphones off but i want to show you something she likes purple too so i bought these rings see these Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I have a giant quilt because I'm a quilter. So I'm going to take these rings and put them on. I have a big curtain rod in here and I'm going to hang a big quilt up just to deaden my sound a bit more in my 
studio because it's really big in here. It's like a 10 by 10 room. And I've never had an issue with my sound, but you know, it could always be better for your sound floor. So I'll try that. And when I get that up, I'll take a picture and send it to you guys. Do you have anything on the ceiling? Because I actually don't have anything on the ceiling. I don't, but you know what I want to do is I want to put fabric up there and then draw it all into the middle around. I have a chandelier in my ceiling and then have it there. So then my sound is way tighter in my head. Cause I have nine foot ceilings in here too, ah. but I've never had an issue with sound, Right. but it's just super cozy. I want to put like little fairy lights that are in like Jenny has in her ceiling and stuff. Because now I'm in here all the time for work and mm -hmm. recording. You spend a lot of time in there. Mm -hmm. So you might as well make it nice, right? Yeah, I definitely like those fairy lights Jenny has. I, I was actually looking at the uh, color-changing LED bulbs that you can oh, do we with the remote control. Um, and I was thinking, like, for different scenes, you know, this is sort of a sad scene. So let's put on the blue light. Oh, funny. Oh, this is a romantic scene. Let's put on the red light. You know, sort of <laughs> use the light to help. Yeah, exactly. The Deep voice. It will be red. I'm, yep. I'm always <laughs> afraid that something like that will cause some kind of radio interference. Buzz. Or LED sort of buzz. shouldn't. But the LED, LED light shouldn't. shouldn't. Others LED might. Don't, but the router the remote to plug into could. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think about that. Good point, Carrie. A transformer or a router. Those could all do that. Yeah, like I have one of those um, LED bulbs in this uh, light above me, and every once in a while I can hear it kind of peppering. Mm. So just be cognizant of that. Other than my light, everything is plugged in outside the room. Oh, yeah, great. Because you're in a closet, right? Right. Oh, cool. So that's one way of keeping that noise away. For mm. ours, I drilled a hole through the wall and then pushed all the plugins through. So then that way, I'm the same thing as David. I'm in the walk-in closet. So I pulled everything through the hole. So nothing is plugged in on this side. That <sighs> way I don't get any interference with it. I had to do a hole too. I have more of a <clears throat> hobo fort, but I, I did put a <laughs> slit in it so that I could put the cords through. Because even my laptop, as quiet yep. as it is, even with everything else off, but just audacity, I was still picking it up. So I had to get the laptop out, put the monitor in and use a second monitor in the studio and everything else is out. And it made a big difference. Wow. Isn't that incredible? Like you wouldn't mm. even think of like cell phones and like even my Apple watch would have interference. You could hear it around the cords and stuff. So like, it's amazing what actually has a charge through it. So make sure you put everything on airplane mode, you know, turn your phone off. You don't need it on while you're in there or put it on airplane mode or do not disturb. I shut everything down. I actually have to keep my phone on. Happily, nobody calls me <laughs> because, um, <laughs> because my wife has a disability and she might need me. Oh, so, okay. I mean, there are some times when I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm doing a line and it beeps, you know, some right. notification. So I'll do the line again, but and that's the only thing I keep on, but I, I have to have the phone. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. My daughter always knocks on my door. Ah, oh, mom, mm -hmm. can I tell you something? <laughs> of course you really can. Right? <laughs> of course. Yeah. I know. It's like, can I watch a show? Yes. Just go. I have a, a little heater because mine's in the far corner of the house. So it gets hmm. quite cold back there. And, you know, the little space heaters, they have the fan. Mm -hmm. So I, I got one of those ones that are just supposed to be radiant. You know, they just have oil and they warm up the oil mm. gently. Right, like a little radiator. But like a little radiator. Okay, which yeah. It's not, it doesn't put out a lot of heat, but it helps. But it occasionally it makes a little, like, I think it's the, the oil inside kind of bubbles or something. And occasionally it just pops, just a little pop. So then I have to redo that line. Mm. Uh, and don't you hate it if you don't catch it in time? Because then you're like, oh, man, <laughs> little creek here mm. and there. Um, yeah, wow. Well, we get we get used to hearing all the tiny little noises in the microphone that you wouldn't mm -hmm. even think would be there. Hey. Um, yeah. OK, so great advice from 
a wretch, uh, veteran radio guy. So this was from Dave. So Dave reached out to me and said, by the way, if you're going to update audacity, don't do it when you're in the middle of a book. Yeah. Right, Dave? Good idea. Good. Make sure if you're going to do any updating or changing any settings, do it between projects or work with your different settings on an audition or something that's a sample or to test it out. Don't do it on one of your middle of your one of your projects. Did you get everything sorted out, Dave? Yeah, it's it's working. It's working. Yeah. But it was scary. Yeah, that totally sucks cuz I did that with the Apple upgrade and you're like, "Oh, it's just a challenge." Um okay, so sequencing effects. We kind of talk about this every single session because we're all trying to better our sequencing effects. And I don't know, some of you were here last session and Jacob was here from the UK and he shared with us um, some sequencing effects that I wanna share with you guys because it's because one of my biggest challenges is my RMS is always too quiet. It's always like sitting in the thirties. And you need it to sit between 18 and 23, right? For mm -hmm. it to be approved. So I'm just opening a file here. Share screen. Okay, you guys can see my screen, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the first things that I love is changing my view to DB view. And this is so you can see it in a lot more detail. Command or control one will zoom in. So um, you're closer, get your, your seconds to be more open. So what he showed me to help with my RMS is I'm going to leave this as stereo because I have something else I want to share with you guys tonight, but I'll just split it for right now. So you select your track, then you go into effect and you hit this filter curve. And mm -hmm. this is what it looks like, which absolutely it, means nothing to us. It doesn't look like that until you choose it. You know, you have this to... was it from default on mine. All right. Well, it's not necessarily the default. Okay. So if, you, uh, so if you do it, you have to go to where it, then you have to choose one of the factory presets. Oh yeah, I'm not there yet. But, but no, but you already have this preset there. That's your preset. That's just reading what's on my oh, current. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I've never my current one, okay. You go to manage and you go down to factory presets and then you click low roll off for speech is what you had yeah okay so you click that and then you click okay so you can't really see that it did much let me just it just took everything out that I know. no one could hear anyway so silly i hate this unless it was thing. bad noise like from the machine or something. Yeah, it just basically took all your low noise and got rid of it. So everything, everything from 60, this is for you, Norman, for your noise floor. So everything from 60 and below it pushed it all lower. What I can do is I'll I'll stop this for a second and then I will do a rating so you guys can see. So analyze. Now, I see you're recording in uh, stereo, not mono. Um, I just added a secondary track to show you guys something after for another question that came through. So I do record in mono. Okay. Okay. So here's my peak level sitting at minus 11. And my RMS is sitting at minus 37.8. Mm. Now I'm going to apply this filter curve because I canceled out so we could have a look 
Then you go to manage, you go factory presets, low roll off for speech, hit okay. And now I'll go to analyze again. So it didn't change anything yet, but you can see my noise floor went down to 80. So now what I do is I go to effect and remember last time he was talking about this loudness normalization. Right. I've played with that and I, I wasn't able to really figure it, figure it out too well. So I'm glad you have. So what you do is you change it to RMS. Um, Cause over here it said L at U F S luffs. So you want to change that. So it says DB on your RMS. And because we have to be between 18 and 23, I just did the middle and did minus 20.5. Click OK. So and now I'm going to measure this. Analyze, ACX check. Okay, so now my RMS is where it needs to be. My nose floor came up to 63 and my peak level, it exceeds, but I'm not done yet. So now this is what he suggested to do and it's literally worked on every single file of mine. So now you go in here. Oh, sorry. Select your file, and now you're going to apply a limiter, which some of you probably do a limiter anyways. And I always do minus four. So when you limit, this is your, you need to be minus three on ACX to pass, but give yourself some headspace. So I always limit to minus four. You could limit to minus 3.2, 3.5, whatever you want to do there. And then, and it's a soft limit. Can you guys see this screen, right? You can see, okay. Click okay. And then you're gonna go in and you're gonna apply a noise reduction on here. I'm just gonna zoom in. I don't know how you guys select your noise reduction or if you do. But what I do is I find an area that doesn't look like it has any clicks or any, any things. And I usually put my volume on maximum in my headphones. And this is risky because if you forget to turn it off, you're like, ah, <laughs> but when I put it on maximum, then I can hear every little thing. So if there's like a intake breath or any kind of a different noise in there, I listen for all of that. And then I take it where there's nothing. It's only white noise. Then I go up and I do my noise reduction and I set mine to 777. So I get my noise profile, select the full track, and then I apply it. So now I'll do my analyze and I'm absolutely perfect on everything. And this is a raw file, no editing. I've not done anything with it. Well, you may have just saved my life. <laughs> this was a game changer for me because I was playing with RMS. Um, there's one in here called CRMS Normalize. That's what I use. Is that what you use? Yeah. And I was finding this to be excellent, but inconsistent. So when I was talking to Jacob about this, I said, like, how consistent is this? Because my noise floor is always really, really quiet, or my RMS is always really quiet. So I need something that's consistent. So you have to do it in that order. Every single time you can't limit first, you have to do it in that order. I and know he, that the, go ahead. And he actually will go in and do another round of noise reduction. I don't need to, I'm fine with it, how it is.
sitting the, uh, my numbers. But if you wanted to, you could, because you're just doing a seven. So the pass is pretty shallow. I'm going to have to give that a try. I literally I'm banging, was been banging my head against the wall because I've, I've had a sequence that has worked, that has worked, that has worked. And I just upgraded my new equipment. So I'm trying to work with existing files. So it passed ACX check. It passed the new audio lab. I submitted yeah. all the files and they bounced them back and said I didn't, it was the minus 60 max mm -hmm. um, variable. I'm like, I, those aren't the readings I got even from their audio lab tool. So I went back to my raw files that I saved and reprocessed them and submitted them again, passed everything again. And when I uploaded them, ACX accepted them all. And then I got a thing back from the sound engineer for the same thing again. That happened so to me early I'm gonna, on. I'm just, I'm, so I'm just now I resubmitted them having processed the third time. And wow. I made some minor tweaks in some, in some of the ways that I did it, but I was still getting the right things from their analysis. And people are saying like in the groups, you can't always trust it. You can't, you know, even with right. audio lab, there's still a chance. So I've got to be dangerously close, but this is my first book and my first set. So I'm learning as I go. So it's not yeah, totally bad, mm -hmm. except for the fact that I'm like losing my mind. Cause I of course want to get this out and get right. it there. And thankfully the author, he had, he has to deal with a cover art. Oh yeah. Issue. I've, I've run so, into that too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not holding everything up, but I still, it's been, I've taken a lot more time than what I was paid for my per finished hour mm -hmm. <laughs> to make it worth my while other than chalking it up to a learning experience. And eventually I'll have something out there, but if I get them back, I'm going to follow this process and see have you um, tried second opinion, Tanya? Second opinion? I'm not familiar with second opinion, but I did like send a file out and then there were, there was some noise issues like from the first time through, mm. but that was resolved the second time through. So like a low rumble that I think was our furnace that I, it, I did had no awareness. So I think that was pe that piece of that first fail, even though it still passed the different analysis tools. So I don't know. Right. I've um, heard of second opinion, but I haven't used it yet. I only ever just used it for the first time. Um, just in my, just this first time in this book. And I was so impressed about my report. Has anybody else used it? No, I used, I used to use second opinion. And did you like it? I loved it, except for the fact that uh, I my computer died and I had to get a new laptop. And when I reinstalled it on the new laptop, mm -hmm. it, it won't. Um, every time I go to uh, choose a file to analyze, all the WAV files are grayed out. So mm. I've got to reload it again. Hmm, so I can I'm use it. One yeah, good okay, thing about it. Find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one good thing about it is it analyzes your head and tail length. I know. I was like, wow. I was just going to see if I could find my report here. Um, let's see. So do you use the ACX check and then you use the second opinion bill? Well, so I just thought I would just try it because everyone, yeah. I hear so many people talking about it. But what's pretty neat about it is, sorry, I'm just going to look for this here. I have heard that second opinion will pick up things that the Audacity tool sets don't. It's incredible, you guys. It'll tell you all your levels. It'll tell you. Is, that? is it free or does it? It's totally free. Yeah. Um, I'll look it up while you guys are talking and I'll put a, a note in here for you to see, but I wanted to, sh cause I had, you have to only use wave files. So right. I thought I created a wave folder here and put all my wave files in. Oh yeah, here, here it is. So what you do is you open second opinion. You guys want me to show you how this works? Yes. Please do. Cause okay. I 
try it if I have to this time. <laughs> yeah. So open second opinion. I have to do a new share now. Okay. So this is what it looks like when you open it. And you can set this all up. So minimum head. So we know we need between five seconds and one minute in the beginning. Your minimum tail. We know we need between one second and five seconds at the end. So I could put this um, to five if I wanted. Or sorry, you can see the numbers here. Minimum head, mm -hmm. maximum. Minimum RMS, maximum. Your floor noise, Norman. Um maximum peak levels. So I could change this to four, which is what I like to do. And then your sample rate. Okay. Then what you do is if you're not doing this already, when you share or when you export your file, you want to make sure you export it as a WAV file and then an MP3 file. Okay. And then David's never had an issue with this, but I have lost several files without the export into wave. Um, so then what you do is I just grabbed them all and I created a wave for second opinion folder. You select all of them, but you basically select your folder because it'll only take folders that will not take individual files. So I'm just going to move that to trash. Um, then you pull this and you bring it into so, second opinion. Valerie, just a quick question. Um, yeah. if, if I just had one file, I wanted to check, could I, I mean, one, uh, like, uh, one of these, I wanted to check. Could I just put that one thing into a folder and I, I think have so. to have multiples? Yeah, I can even test that for you. So let's okay. see here. So select and analyze, um, Before remote moments, okay, choose. I'm gonna just share this guy now. So it's just processing everything. So it says runtime is 66 minutes, fail 11 errors present in the files. So at first I was like, oh my God, how do I even read any of this? But it just gives you your sample rate, how long everything is. So some of it's just, ex excuse me, extraneous information, but then it has error head length is longer than maximum. So my maximum head length, I put at 0.75 and this one is 0.753922. Mm -hmm. So it's really detailed. Um, and then it tells you your seconds at the tail. It gives you maximum peak, average RMS, and your minimum RMS. So then you can go in and you can change them and fix them. It's incredible. And like, Tom, I think it was you that said it tells you your, your head length and your tail length, which is so nice because sometimes, you know, you can screw that up pretty easy if you're within a couple of seconds of it. Yeah, it's hard to eyeball it. It's hard to eyeball it. Um, and then, so I don't really have any errors, even though it says I have 11. Like, I'm okay if it's at 0 0.753922 versus 0.75. Because you have up until one second. So, yeah, it gives you everything. And it actually exports this as a text document within the actual... Oh, I'm going to reshare this within the actual original folder. There's your report here. Now, can you just do one file? Let me see. Select and analyze. No. So what you would have to do, Jenny, like you said, is you'd have to pull that one file into a folder and then pull the folder into second opinion. You would have to move it around. So Norman, I think this would be a really good option for you to help for you to see your noise floor and your 
Yeah, I'm, I'm downloading it right now. Are you? Okay. And then just set, set it to what you want. So if you like five seconds at the tail, set it to five seconds. If you want your DB to be at four, set it to four. This one is set up to the minimum that you need to pass ACX. So if you want to give yourself a little buffer, do that. Anybody else have any questions about second opinion? It's definitely worth a free download and to test your files. It gives you like a really great snapshot of every single chapter. So one of your chapters could be louder than the other. Maybe you recorded during the day and the other one you recorded at night where, you know, you're not exactly consistent between the two. Mm -hmm. I found it very valuable. Mm -hmm. It's worth trying out, you guys. Um, okay, let me see here. Headroom, so we talked about remove breaths or not, where to breathe. We talk about this every session too, don't we? Mm -hmm. um, so you can use Amplify to get rid of your breaths or soften them. And you can use, you know, delete and just delete them. Or you can use your punch, copy, paste, carry, which I'm using now all the time. I love that. Do you guys use punch, copy, punch, paste? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good. Okay. Um, genres. So we talked about genres and Krista is kind of interesting because you're one of the ones that mentioned you have a pen name for one genre and then you I do. use your own name. So how many genres do you narrate in? I'm doing two right now. So I'm doing uh, romance and erotica. So that's under Cassie Pines. And then I also have Krista Carl. And then that's when I'm doing like my mystery and horror, which I love. Hmm. Um, but it's just to separate because the thing is, I was listening to someone, they said, it's great when you're way up there and you're a narrator and you're, you're very popular because they don't care what you've done before. But when we're starting out, sometimes the authors will look, obviously a very Christian publishing company is not going to take me when they know that I've been doing lesbic or erotica, they're going to turn their back. And I'd be very honest with my authors. It's more for the public. So then mm -hmm. that way they're not scared off by it when they first hear any of it. Yeah. I, I mean, I did, the, I've done some erotica books as yeah. well under a pen name. I was like, Whew, mm -hmm. I'm not putting my name on this. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want my family to hear this. I know it's like the first thing that Google all of a sudden it's like, Oh, that's what she's doing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so she's writing my eight million dollar project. Okay, let's uh, let's think twice mm. about exactly. that history. Yeah, exactly. Like, no which she's I, alone in that little room. Oh yeah, I know, right? It's like okay. <laughs> my mother, um, said, my mother said, "Oh, so I can download the book with, from Audible?" I said, you could, <laughs> "But you can't." <laughs> so, oh, my God, that would be the worst. <laughs> That's so funny. So that's where I think a pen name is really good. Um, one of my authors that I've read for, her name is Amanda Steele. She writes horrors and zombie books and stuff like that. But she also has done some children's books. So when she does children's books, she has a totally different name. Yep. And her, I forget her children's book's name, but it's like something really childish like grace emma or something like that but she says i don't want my children book fans to start looking at my name and seeing like horror zombie books and you know killing and everything i'm like oh yeah good point i didn't think of that so if you do want to cross those genres like there's so many pen names mm -hmm. and so many people have pen names, which I didn't even have no idea when I got into this in the beginning, how no. common it is. You just make but a you pen just name. do that at, right at the end where they say what name you want it to be. Yeah. On. yeah. yeah. And they, they say, have let to the register. author know. Yeah. They say, let the author know just for their cover art. So then that way they know ahead of time, but ACX could care less like yeah, when you're how putting they it keep in track of all your identities are still under you you're as yep. the account holder exactly but it's per i didn't know you could specify that for i might be more brave to do something then <laughs> and you know what like 
uh, Krista can probably contest to this, but to do like erotica books or the ones that are like unmentionables on that list, like you get paid really well. I, my, I have my social media is under my, my pseudonym right now because I get more work doing that than I do under my own name right now. <laughs> what I don't understand though on that, so I've looked to try to do that and all the erotica I see on ACX is either really short or really long and nothing in the middle. Mm. Click on it. I've noticed with ACX though, even though you're saying uh, pick everything, sometimes when you go in, if you look under the genres, it automatically unclicks yeah, the romance and erotica. No, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure it's clicked. I'm just saying that <laughs> I'm just saying Dave. that the book length, the book length is is either they're really short and it's like that's ridiculous, like a little or rebellion. they're really really long, like they're there are these compendiums of stories, and that's yeah. fine. That sounds like fun, but why do they have to have a twelve hour compendium? Why can't they have a seven hour compendium? Like seriously, <laughs> why does it have to be so long? Exactly. <laughs> Like you'll get tired of your own voice by the end of that book. Oh yeah. It'll be exhausting. And I, I don't know, I need a several showers. <laughs> God. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna mute Dave for a few minutes. All right. <laughs> no. He's on timeout. <laughs> yeah. Dave. It's so funny too, because those of you have who've been in this group from the beginning, Dave was like, No, I'm not doing characters. I'm only gonna do like nonfiction and one person point of view now he's like i want a romance with two characters and he's in he's got his pen mm. name <laughs> dave <laughs> dave what would be your erotica genre name <laughs> um i don't, don't know talk. I, i'm Keep not sure i i love chris what krista what was it something pines cassie pines cassie, cassie does she pine does she now cassie pines <laughs> Cassie yeah. Pines for something. Well, it, it was funny because my <laughs> husband asked, he's like, how did you come up with that name? And I was like, that was my alias if I ever ran away and started another life. He's like, good to know. Good. To know. <laughs> <laughs> Who was on, was it, um, was it Liz Porter? She's so funny. Uh, when we were asking her what her names were, she's like, well, I took my first dog and then my last whatever and named it after. Oh, we were just howling. You know, all those silly formulas. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, that's great. Okay, so where were we? On genres. Oh, go ahead. No, I had a question about when you did your sequence. Mm -hmm. when you told us last month, when you did your limiter, you had your gain set to two. But now your gain is set to zero. So, it wouldn't have been two. No? No. Let me share my screen. Um, my limiter effect, um, let me do this one down here. Fact limiter. Oh, my limiter might've been at 3.5 carry. Uh, no, up here, the input gain I thought was set to two. Oh, yeah. the only reason why you need to change, um, I read about this. Hang on. Let me think. Because yours was different last month. It might have been. You know, I have to mix things up and make sure you guys are paying attention. I can't remember why it was at two. There might have been a reason for that. Well, it boosts the whole gain. So I didn't know if that was how you were originally solving the problem with your negative 30 dB. No, my negative 30 dB I solved with no, I, doing. But this was last month. Oh, this yeah, right. So, okay, so last month or last time we met, I was still doing compressor. Okay. So I would compress and then I would limit and then I normalized. Okay. So my whole thing, my whole game has changed. It's been Got a it. game changer. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. No problem. Why would anyone compress? And I know what compression is used for in radio. Why would you use it in this case? So like when I was really new and green to get my RMS level up, someone told me to compress. So that's what I did and it worked, but um, I didn't like how it changed my voice. 
And because everything else in my, um, my recording was perfect. It was just my RMS needed to be louder. So the only way I could accomplish that at the time was through compression. Now you, you record on a zoom H six or mm -hmm. H6. Yep. So the question is, have you thought about, I don't know what mic you use, but have you thought about an inline amplifier or something? I have one. So I record in a sure SM seven B mic. Okay. And then I have a cloud lifter app. And then I go into my H6 Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Then I played with the settings in my H6. And I have a double pop filter on my microphone as well. Okay. I just don't project, I guess. But okay. it all works. It all works for me. And I need my thing to be um, portable, like my recording. So I just kind of married up to that. Projecting is uh, overvalued. Projecting is not. I have a problem because I try to project. Hmm. Shouldn't try to project. Coming from radio, I think I have to project, but it makes me run out of air. So I breathe more, take more breaths, don't get those long sentences in, and I get less uh expression in because i'm i'm pushing so projection is overrated well i, I don't know how to do it i agree david I, I remember in radio days when you had to talk and you were pushing but you only had 30 to 60 seconds to push and then you were going to ad break you know or mm -hmm. went up the next song so uh that's something uh, going through editing, I'm hearing a lot of, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, you know, taking that radio breath, which you don't hear on air because there's different levels, you know, broadcasting and radio. But and you're probably talking over music. Going through narration. Hmm. Maybe some. Exactly. Sorry. So you got that sound bed under you that hides those, you know, or the, you know, little st stumble breath so that's definitely something i've learned in going through editing i'm hearing a lot of it in chapter one where i was doing that broadcast i was doing that breath so and you'll I, notice I, too I norman projecting is not a good thing for team. well i like after i've done 20 oh. books now and it's the way i it's just the way i talk so I can't change the way I speak and narrate and my sound, maybe my voice coach will tell me different tomorrow night, but, um, there are exercises for that. Okay, good. Okay. So I don't know, for me, I found my sweet spot. I, we have a private class tomorrow, so you guys can go to her class and then, um, but one thing I was going to say something about that. Um, Oh, you're on chapter one. By the time you get to chapter 10 or chapter 15, you're going to find a different groove for narration, which is totally different than radio because you're in it for the long haul, not the little short sprints. Right, Dave? That's what you taught me anyway. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. Can Anybody I else? Interject something here. Yes. Um, since everyone is talking about this, I know I'm doing a Pringles can thing tomorrow night for your signature note, but I will also do exercises that I'm going to show, you know, that I'll show you privately. Uh, I'll build that into the class, the session tomorrow. Okay, great. There you go, you guys. Awesome. Okay, um, what else did we talk about? Limiter and low pass filter and setting your DB view. We went through that. Um, limiter is your friend, you guys. Low pass filter, Norman, get used to using that on your breaths. You'll really like that. Um, scammy titles, we went through this. Just pay attention to those. I saw some new um, comments on the Facebook group saying there was one, I think, on cross stitching. 
Like, how do you describe cross-stitching in a book? Like, just use your common sense, right? I, but, I wanted to bring up, if you don't mind, yeah. I wanted to interject. I saw one just today on ACX, and I thought I'd run it by you guys because my um, instinct was telling me no, but I wondered if your I Your heart just, was telling you yes? Too, too paranoid. Okay. Um, it was a, a fiction novel. Uh, I did the um, author snoop, and uh, the author matched. So, you know, it looked good. Um, there was no... The thing that made me suspicious is there were no comments from the author whatsoever. They just filled out the barest minimum of information of what they wanted, and um, there was nothing extra at all. And I looked up the author, and he is very productive. He's done maybe 20 or 30 books, um, he had maybe 10 books on Audible already, not this one, but some of his other ones. Um, I noticed the ones that he had on Audible were all done. He had two favorite narrators, a, a woman and a man that he had gone back and forth between and used for all of his other books. And I thought, why would such a productive author who always already has favorite narrators throw it back into ACX for RS. And I, you know, with no comments of what he's looking for. So it just seemed too good to be true. Does that sound too paranoid to you guys or does that sound realistic? I don't know. Anybody? I wondered the same things you did. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if there's any other way to, to reach them outside of that yeah, venue I thought of that. See. Yeah, and I couldn't find any um, personal in one of uh, the groups, website. In one of the groups, somebody posted today and said, well, I was suspicious about this book, so I reached out to the author on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And the author said, oh, no, thank you for telling me, and we'll have it taken down. But uh, that was interesting to me to think, because everybody you know, a professional author, I think, would have a LinkedIn page. Yeah, maybe I didn't check on LinkedIn. He might have been on there. I've gone on to um, people's websites as well. So XYZ yeah, I couldn't authors. find a, a personal website for him. So anyway, yeah. I didn't I didn't audition. I found something else that looked a little more believable. But I thought this just seems too good to be true. Yeah, I mean, I'm trust looking. your gut. I see cross stitch for the soul. <laughs> I know, isn't that ridiculous? And there's a coloring book too. Yeah, the coloring shapes, book. colors, and numbers. Anything mm -hmm. to scam. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. uh, what's in it for them? I don't understand. I don't know it, either, especially when they're PFH books. It would be nice if the scams were all quite that obvious. Yeah. No, Jenny, no. with the narrators that he had before, are they on ACX? I wouldn't reach out to them, but you know, if he's always used ACX narrators, at least you're like, oh, okay, he's used this platform. Yeah, right. right. Some of them on are Audible, they're using like actual, prof like professional, like, like sound studios with, right. with narrators out of there. But if he's always used ACX, it could be just very well, they're busy and they can't take it. But I would have been the same as you too. I would have been like looking mm. everything up and checking it out if they've always, yeah. they've always used the same narrators. I yeah. see the, the cross stitch book, you open audition and it's a blank piece of paper. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Like, what a waste of time. Why would, why, how could they scam anyone if they don't I, even have I, an audition? I, I, yeah. It was a blank piece of paper. That's weird. It's yeah. ridiculous. All right. Anything else on scammy titles? <laughs> hmm. We could talk about these forever. Ever. There's always some jokes about the racy ones too on some of those Facebook groups. <laughs> they always make me laugh. Um, we pretty much know where everybody's located. We had that last week where our members located. Lots of Florida, Florida people, a couple of Arizona people. Oh, lucky Sunny's people. Sunny's in Washington, Canadians. Mm. One guy lives on his boat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, radio dramas, multiple point of view we talked about, which we're all kind of interested in. Definitely duo or duet, right, Dave? You want to get one of those? Yeah. Social media, networking, and promotional 
so funny because every time we talk about this, everyone's like, I don't want to share my promo codes. I don't want anybody to listen to my book that I know. Mm. <laughs> We're all a bunch of chickens. Mm -hmm. We have to have more confidence and promote our books better. I have to go tomorrow. There's like an open studio and we all have to take turns and read a portion of the book. And this round is all romance. So I have to read a part of a romance book or a love scene in front of everyone. So the rules are everyone has to turn off their cameras so you don't feel oh, like yeah. everyone's staring right, at right. you, even though they are. <laughs> oh God. But I've been sweating for the last like two days because it's different when you're in your studio by yourself practicing oh, I and now you're going to be doing it to peers <laughs> and actually doing it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh my God, good luck. You'll have to let us know how it goes. You want to you know, practice it for us tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Sound like we my won't judge. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, That's so funny. Well, you'll you'll do fine. Just breathe. <laughs> practice in the mirror. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> um, Upwork. Uh, we were talking about other ways to promote other sites for PF at PFH and Royalty Share. So those of you in our members list, I sent out an audio flow audition platform. Jacqueline or Jacqueline, however you pronounce her name, she's the one that runs that group. If you haven't signed up for a profile, do that. Go on there, add your name to it. It's very closed. So you actually don't get to go and look at auditions. You don't know who's reaching out to you, what the book is. But about once a month or once every other month, she'll send out those notices. So I don't know if you guys had a chance in my email that I sent you, but go in there because that company, there's three companies that kind of group together. They are so organized. So you go in, you can see POV, you can see all the MCs. They give you a description of how they are looking for the tone to be. Um, they give you age, where they're from. Like they give you a full character build. So you would know what you're getting into. And they tell you like what vocal age they want to do the narration. It's so organized. So if you want to like have a glimpse at what ACX doesn't do, that company is fantastic. And I mean, it's worth, it's worth trying out. I've tried out for a couple and um, they sometimes will do a couple rounds too. So if they get lots of auditions, they'll come back to you and say, okay, we want you to do one more round or, and then they'll actually tell you that you weren't chosen or were chosen. So they're very organized. Anyways, another platform that you can try out. Looks beautiful. Um, yeah, it's kind of neat. So BookBub, those of you who were mocking me last week when I was saying Book Hub or the last time, BookBub is, if you don't know it, it's like an online e-reader platform. And when you go in to buy a book on there, they're like a dollar or two dollars. So those of you who read on your Kindle, it's like awesome because I read like a book a week on there. And when you get them for a dollar or two dollars, like... I just buy five at a time or something like that. But what I did was I went in to see who had an audio book version of their book. And then those ones who did, and I reached out to the authors to see if they would like to do their book in audio. I haven't heard back from anybody, but I think I'm onto something. So if you guys do something like that, try it out. And if you get a gig, let us know, because I think that's kind of an interesting little avenue. And it's you bringing them to ACX for you. So it might be worth it. Okay. Um, what else do I have in here? Uh, second opinion, sharing files. One thing we talked about was sharing files before you click I'm done. I don't know if any of you are open to sharing files with your author, but I have done that outside of the ACX platform. And it's been a very good experience for me. My one author that I showed, I was showing you guys last time. This is, this is the book that I did already for him, Limbo. It's a scary horror book. 
but he, um, he was so great. Like he has a very particular, he's Canadian as well. So we speak the same language with our processing, Dave, but he, um, he's very particular. So he'll come back to me and say things like, actually, I can share it with you. I'll show you what he did. And I just love his commitment to, um, this thing here, I'll just copy this and I'll show you. And this is why I would share with an author, because if you get constructive feedback like this, hang on, I gotta share my screen. So this is what he says to me. Part one should be bath tubs instead of tubs. Asking instead of asked. Like how specific is this? Like even here, wondering if you can adjust the emphasis was a younger me. Right now you say a younger me, but ideally the emphasis should be on the word me. Wondering if you could boost the volume. Like, I don't know what you guys think, but I like this feedback. And I said debauchery, but I guess it's debauchery. Debauchery. Debauchery? Debauchery. Okay. Debauchery, yeah. Anyway, I, I really like working with him. I like how he's so committed to the little tiny details. And these are things that when you listen back, you probably wouldn't catch your own mistake on like palpable versus palatable when you're listening back through. He also gave me a really good compliment too, which I should probably share. <laughs> he says, hey, yeah, this is sounding awesome. All the right emphasis I was hoping for and nice performances and touches like whispering or a creepy voice here and there that elevated the stories for me. So thanks for your hard work. Here's a handful of a few small errors that I would like you to fix. Nice. Way to go. Yeah. So cool. I thought that was pretty good feedback. Okay. Oh, no. Was that on the whole book or just on the first 15? Whole book. Oh. Yeah. It was a short book. Um, maybe like an hour, hour and a half. Oh, okay. Just a, like a, it's the short, scary stories one that I was... Mm-hmm sharing with you guys last week. Okay, I'm just going back to my notes. Um, Oh, that was it. So that's our recap from last session. That was it. Anybody have any questions? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Not me. Does anybody want to read the passage I sent out to get feedback? There was a few of you that responded saying that you would like to do that. I don't know if any of you people are here, though. Where's that passage? It was in the email I sent out. There was like a one paragraph um, little clip in the email. Oh, the thing about death. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. Well, I, I printed it out perfectly willing to do it, but I went last time and got the, the benefit of doing it. So I definitely don't want to um, push in line. I just might be willing to break the ice if other people need me to lead the way. Break the ice, Jenny. Come on. Okay. Death isn't usually the first thing I think of when I meet the kind of guy that takes my breath away. I know it was the last thing on my mind the night my world was turned upside down. The underground, 
is one of those clubs that I normally wouldn't go to. If you don't like bad vibes, this isn't a good place to go. It's a club known for lots of black leather, loud music, and sweaty bodies. <laughs> Not my kind of hangout. I'm definitely more of a classical music and wine kind of girl. But that's mostly due to my being a wussy when it comes to anything dark. Most would say that New Orleans isn't exactly the place to live if you don't like the dark side of life. But it is my home. The underground is the embodiment of the darkness that lurks on the fringes of society. Did I really want to walk into that darkness? I stood in the parking lot and stared at the building. Half tempted to get back in my car and drive away. But I really needed this job. I didn't want to go back to ringing up drunks and other riffraff at the quick stop. Mm. Very nice. Good, good reading. Take, yeah. Take, take the first yeah. half of it and throw that away and take the second half of it and keep it. Because I agree. you started just you started to me like you were projecting, you're just projecting. Mm -hmm. And by the end, you were really into this character and I wanted to know more about, more about you. So I'd say the last half is fantastic. The first half- Yeah, I, I, was, I was kind of more relaxed by the, the second half. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good, reaction to like when we get into our recording studios and you start narrating it takes us like you know a good couple minutes to kind of get into our rhythm of speaking right. so something to kind of remember when you're in there and like I always warm up my narration with auditions and I read a couple of auditions first oh, cool. then I get into doing my book hmm. and idea. I kind of find my pattern after Anybody else want to read? Where I'll read. Snatched? Go ahead. Whoever wants to read, go ahead. Death isn't usually the first thing I think of when I meet the kind of guy that takes my breath away. I know it was the last thing on my mind the night my world was turned upside down. The underground is one of those clubs that I normally wouldn't go to. If you don't like bad vibes, this isn't a good place to go. It is a club known for a lot of black leather, loud music, and sweaty bodies. Mm -hmm. Not my kind of hangout. I'm definitely more of a classical music and wine kind of girl, but that's mostly due to my being a wussy when it comes to anything dark. Most would say that New Orleans isn't exactly the place to live if you don't like the dark side of life, but it is my home. The underground is the embodiment of the darkness that lurks on the fringes of society. Did I really want to walk into that darkness? I stood in the parking lot and stared at the building, half tempted to get back in my car and drive away. But I really needed this job. I didn't want to go back to ringing up drunks and other riffraff at the quick stop. You sound like somebody I wouldn't want to run into in a back alley. <laughs> <laughs> definitely got an edge to your voice tom uh -huh. like you uh you got something to say you got like kind of some attitude <laughs> that's how it sounded well, to me yeah i could get rid of the attitude i don't know i liked it hmm. i did too i heard i heard because we couldn't really see you mm -hmm. i got humor from your voice in a couple unexpected places and i i like that thanks yeah it was kind of neat without seeing your facial expressions and kind of your pondering you really were listening to an audiobook and not seeing somebody act like like jenny anybody else mm. want to give it a go I would, but I can't find it. Where was it sent? When was um, it? it was sent in the email for this session. 
Toward the bottom of the email. Mm -hmm. right, in blue. In blue. Scroll down, scroll down. It's kind of closer toward the bottom because I put those links in there. I can share my screen too if you want, Carrie. If that's okay. I don't want to take everybody's yeah. time. But... No, no. Let's just enjoy. So, okay. Oops. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Death isn't usually the first thing I think of when I meet the kind of guy that takes my breath away. I know that it was the last thing on my mind. Excuse me. I know it was the last thing on my mind the night my world was turned upside down. Excuse me. The underground is one of those clubs that I normally wouldn't go to. If you don't like bad vibes, this isn't a good place to go. It is a club known for lots of black leather, loud music, and sweaty bodies. Not my kind of hangout. I'm definitely more of a classical music and wine kind of girl. But that's mostly due to my being a wussy when it comes to anything dark. Most would say that Nolens isn't exactly the place to live if you don't like the dark side of life, but it is my home. The underground is the embodiment of the darkness that lurks on the fringes of society. Did I really want to walk into that darkness? I stood in the parking lot and stared at the building, half tempted to get back in my car and drive away. But I really needed this job. I didn't want to go back to ringing up drunks and other riffraff at the quick stop. Is that your real accent? No. That's a great accent. That was awesome. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. It's like there's some places you have to know how to pronounce. It's New Orleans or Louisville, Kentucky. I was just going to ask you to pronounce Louisville. 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 So. I was really good. You were like, good. got some swag. You knew what you didn't want. Yeah, I liked it. I love your, the tone of your voice too, Carrie. It's thank really you. good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback, everybody. Thank you. Anybody else? I thought the accent was great. I did too. I thought you were like a singer. You know when a singer gets on stage and they don't have any accent? Then they get off stage and they're like from someplace yeah. in Europe that you can't pronounce. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like yeah, all the all the British singers sing like sing American. Exactly. Yeah. No, like like most South Floridians, I was born in New York, actually. So oh. it, hmm. awesome. But, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so if nobody else wants to go. I'm going to continue on because I'm too chicken. Hmm. <laughs> um, so Denny sent me this request for promo codes out of the US. And she says it's a big frustration for her. So I couldn't actually find any information on Canadian promo codes. But what I did find was if you wanted a Canadian promo code, you send ACX an email and they'll send you 25 Canadian promo codes for Canadian, like audible.ca. So if anybody is interested in that, I'll just add it to the, the uh, show notes, but, or sorry, the session notes and it seemed pretty straightforward. Send them an email, request it, they'll send it to you. So not like our UK codes where we just automatically get them. Um, okay, and then DSer and DClicker. Um, does everybody here do DSing and DClicking in their audio world? I do DClicking. You do DClicking? I have the RX7 M. Uh, uh, plugins. The full RX7? Yeah. Oh. Or the, or the cheap one that we all got, just got for $20. No, I got the, uh, yeah, I got the, the standard. Uh, so it has all the, it has a voice declicker and the de regular declicker and DSs and D-reverb and 
all that stuff. All the D's. Yeah, all the D's. <laughs> so, how much was your um, plugins? Um, well, I bought the 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 plugins came along with the uh, with the program that I bought mm. with with RX seven itself. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then I just brought them over to Audacity, and and now I don't have to import my file to another. DAW, I can just keep it in Audacity and and use the RX7 plugins. Hmm, interesting. Anybody else do it that way? I I got the RX8 and um, the standard, and mm -hmm. I brought the plugins in. I I like their voice declick, not the regular yeah. click, but the voice declick better than I like the declicker in Audacity. I think it's great. And Your voice is so solid, Carrie. Like I don't hear a clicking or nothing in your voice. It's just so so solid. I wish my microphone didn't hear it, but oh. <laughs> but whenever you know, it's that same thing that when you open your mouth, you know, I I do try. I thought it was a wonderful tip that you had to start the sentence with your mouth open. With your mouth open. But I. It's I huge. Get, yeah, I get some of the 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 opening of my mouth clicks and hmm. this. The RX-8 takes them right out without, it doesn't ruin any of the ends of my Ds or my my Ks or things like that. It knows what's a click and what's not. That's good to know, because I've always been afraid that it would over treat right. something. Same. So I, I, well, and this was a pretty short book. So I manually de-click, like I wanted to listen through to it anyway, both before I did any processing and then after, but the first time through in editing, I take out the, the audible clicks manually, but I don't, I won't want to do that forever, but mm -hmm. it's good to hear that this is a product that doesn't um, over create any issues with your actual voice quality. Yeah. One of, things, one of their things, it was a, like a spectral denoise. I had a problem afterwards. It had taken out a lot of my, you know, like, it made it sound tinny. Mm. Did. Yeah. I also keep a file for when I have to do pickups if something got removed because I thought it was a breath or something with just the end of the D or the end of the T from it or and I I copy it in if there's a problem. Oh, wow, you do? If, it, if I lose it because and I hear that the word is truncated Mm -hmm. like desk if i lost the k, i have a file where i've you know i've got the k and i copy it in that is so tricky we all have our little things that we do hey yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like i've taken like a like a word i can't think of an exact example but like say it's and and I don't like how I said and ahead. And so I've copied that and and put it over at the end <laughs> <laughs> because it just sounded better. It's funny how we like will clip things in and out. Um, well, for me, I have like a very strong S. So you guys probably all can hear in my microphone. Um, so I've been playing with the DS or trying to figure out like without making my S sound like a th or like an f or just airy because i still want to have that sharpness there but to just to so now i'm all i'm saying is s hmm. just to soften it but one guy was on youtube and he says um take a pencil and put it on your face and so every time you say s it takes the noise and splits it up so it softens it he says, obviously, you don't want to stand there and record with a pencil on your face. But what you can do is put the pencil on your microphone. I'm like, so then if you tape a pencil on your microphone, when you talk into it, it'll take your S and split it. I'm like, there must be a better way. Did you find that worked? No. <laughs> so then, so then I thought, okay, then he also said, well, just go into amplify, which I did test this today and take your S's and just amplify them to the negative. About negative three. 
Yeah. Ne- I did negative four. Yeah, exactly. And that totally worked. So I'll show you something on here, which I thought was very interesting, just to, along the lines of the de um, I'm just going to. You can also sometimes fade in or fade them out quickly. Fade in, fade out. Yeah. Oh, speaking of fade in and fade out, fade out when you guys do your 0.5 or your three seconds at the end, do you do fade in, fade out there? Or are you just insert silence or what do you do? On auditions, I try to fade in and fade out. But what about on your books? What do you put in there? You mean at the beginning and the end? Yeah. Room noise. Do you fade in, fade in, fade yeah. out, or do you just leave it? No, I, I just leave it. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Room noise. Just room noise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why, but I had in my head that I should fade in, fade out. So I did that on my last book. Even I mean, though I had I just mean, room imagine, noise. Imagine a person listening. Uh, I mean, are you doing that in each chapter? Yeah. Well, then your room noise goes down and then it suddenly comes back up. As somebody reads and goes from chapter three to chapter four. So I shouldn't do that. That's what you're telling me. I can see the thought process there. Okay. I mean, that's the logic in my mind. It might be wrong. I don't know. I mean, it was like, I do mine at 0.75 of a second. So the beginning, I'm not, I don't really have an issue, but maybe I shouldn't be doing that. I don't know why I did that this time. Okay. So I don't know either. So what I did in here for the semblance and the de was I would select my file. Then I went up to effect and these are two plugins that I already had in here. And I was playing with this threshold. So I don't know if you guys actually use a de like I need one, but you can play with your threshold on here. And when you select isolate changes, instead of apply, so isolate, and I did mine at minus 40, this is what happens. So everywhere there's a bar here is one of my S's. So what I did, is Norman still with us? What I did on here was I, I created this other track, Norman, so I could see where in my file are the S's that I want to soften. So then I went in here and then I could see in here that I wanna soften this S. So then I just did an amplify to the negative four on here. And it worked just totally awesome. And then all I did was I just, deleted this secondary track it was only to do the S's. Cause if you, if you just hit apply, you can't really see all of them. And sometimes it'll pick up like, this is just a click. It's not even an S. So this is what I did. And I'm going to continue to do this just to soften them up a bit. Can but you have I, I us hear maybe... the difference as opposed to just see it? Um, yeah, I think so. I'm not sure why those were different, but so if I go, well, I haven't applied them yet. So here's the original. We can't hear that because you didn't click. Share computer sound. I'm sorry. So okay, I'm gonna do that. To, well, you don't. Have to, you have, then you'd have know, to start right? over. You'd have to start over. Share sound. Let's just try this. See if it works. Yeah. Does that work now? No. You have it's something you had to do when you when you or, oh, yeah. shared screen. I'm sorry. Initially, right? Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Maybe I can do it this way. Baby Whisperer. 
The Baby Whisperer Solves All Your Problems is an in-depth look at the most challenging issues faced by parents of babies and young children today. The book goes beyond the basics introduced in our first two books, becoming a compendium of specific. And- so you can hear all that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now let's take this file. I'm not going to go through each individual one, but we'll just do a pass. And then I'll s- select apply changes. Baby Whisperer. The Baby Whisperer Solves All Your Problems is an in-depth look at the most challenging issues faced by parents of babies and young children today. Baby Whisperer. The Baby Whisperer Solves All Your Problems. It just softens it a little, but not really enough in my opinion. I think you're awfully sensitive to it. <laughs> I, I don't know. And then the more I listen to it, the, the more I talk with like this harsh semblance. So then I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. But it's something that I need to work on and just kind of just take that edge off a little. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for your help on my DSer. <laughs> I'm just joking. Mm -hmm. Um, There was another one out there called Spitfish. Has anybody heard of this? Spitfish. So I'm like, have you? That was like the weirdest thing. And so then when I looked into it, it's probably the most common DSer out there is called Spitfish. And it's a plugin that you can download. Cool. Well, I'm sorry, folks. I've got to leave my, yeah, I got to go, but, uh, bye everybody. Bye. Nice seeing you, Tom. Tom. Have a safe trip home. Yeah. Safe travels. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks. All Mm. right. Arrivederci. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. Okay. Another thing that, um, was brought up was the declicker. Does everybody use a declicker? Sounds like. We all do. I have never used a D clicker. You know, I don't always, but if I do it in start of a project, then I so can what is that? Is fire. that taking mouth noises away? What is that taking? Yeah. Mouth noises? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it just takes your if you clip and it's too high of a clip, you know, and it's really stretching your histogram, then it'll get rid of that and soften it. Uh, somebody else asked for setting up Instagram or Facebook for business. I found these two links that I'm going to just put in our chat here. I found them both very valuable for step-by-step instructions on how to set up your Facebook for business and your Instagram. Instagram's owned by Facebook. So if you go to search things in there, you'll probably come up with Facebook, but it's just because they're owned. But I absolutely love Instagram for promoting my podcast. Like I use it for my podcast and I use it to promote um, artwork for my podcast and my audio book. So if I'm promoting a book, I love Instagram for that because you can tag everything and you can have like up to 30 different tags on it. So your name who you're working for, if they're on there, you can tag back to them and hit their social media. Um, You can have it so it, Jenny, so it feeds through your Facebook. (laughs) Um, And then you can, yeah, just create a bit of a following that way. I find it very beneficial to promote through Instagram to Facebook. So there is a couple links on there if you guys want to play with that and try it out and see what you can come up with. And there's also setting up your Facebook business page on there. So that was one of the questions that was brought to me. I don't know if it was anybody here, but if you want to promote your audiobook world on Facebook under a business name or your pseudonym, then there's a link there for you to play with that. 
guidelines for demos and adding music. Who here has a demo? Who here has a good demo? Dave, of course. You didn't say I had a good demo. You just said demo. <laughs> demo. Yours is probably really good. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in a, radio I'm radio in a different. Now, there's a question about generation. demos. One, of, one of you at a time. Go ahead. Norman. Is that who was talking? No, Go ahead, David Norman. <laughs> Go ahead, David. I'm just saying I'm in a different group. We're about to have a, a Facebook, a different Zoom group, and we're about to have someone talking to us about demos. And I think they're going about to tell us that they that, that we don't have what I thought of as a demo. I mean, I have a demo that's a few minutes long and has a bunch of different styles in it. And I think I'm about to be told that's not what you do. That, mm. that that you are you have all right you here's a first person fiction here's a third person fiction here's a this kind of this kind oh. of this kind of and you know and i've been told that in classes too so i'm very interested in what people are doing for demos because what i think of as a demo comes from my, my radio days and voiceover days and apparently this is very different Sonny, do you have experience in that? You're on mute. You're mute, oh. Sonny. You're mute. You're muted. Oh, I can't unmute her, you guys. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, oh, that's okay. Okay, great. I know that there, because I've been talking to my voice coach, you know, about demo reel and all of that and and he said that there is now this shift you know that that the earth is shifting with it so i'm i'm still researching that hmm. and and i know that for some reason he said to me uh because i'm going to be um i'm going to hire myself to do my own book for audible and he said that's going to be your calling card right there Hmm. And so, but, but I'm researching all that now. Yeah. I mean, I think I thought Barbie would be here tonight because she's done a few rounds of demos that I've heard some of them and it's like a gamut for commercial to some sort of a workbook to, she has like everything in there, gospel, and I don't know if you should keep it all in one genre or if you should have all your fiction or have all your commercial work separate or mixed up together. I don't know. See, I right think now, you could right, probably choose, right? You tell the members of the jury. Because right I'm thinking. Now he's telling me to do just a mix. It's mm -hmm. just a mix. You don't have to cluster together. I mean, I would think it'd be targeted towards the work that you want to get, most likely, right. and it wouldn't be the same for each of us, potentially. We might all have different goals or different kinds of things that we want to do. I wonder if it's not as um, specific, or not specific, but templated anymore. I think there's a lot mm -hmm. more flexibility, probably, to choose what fits your vocal style or the kind of work that you want to do. In your marketing plan, you might use a different type of. Right, I'm demo. sorry, you were breaking up their marketing. Say what did you say? Marketing oh, plan. Is it better now? I'm just joking. No, <laughs> I'm saying you're breaking up because I don't have a marketing plan. I'm working <laughs> on one, and I'm actually recording a demo tomorrow, but it's more commercial, so it's different styles of commercial, kind of like mm. a flat and a boring and a warm and empathetic and a, that kind of thing as a place mm. to start. So I'll let you know, it's my first time doing it, but I've been yeah, working with my know. coach. So he's producing it and we'll see. Like I could see a demo being really advantageous if you can do like 30 character voices. I could see that being a beneficial demo. And I've heard those on ACX, you know, when you kind of just scan through people's samples like, holy man, some people are so good at these. Like my demo will be 
if you see what you get, like, I don't have a lot of voices to be casting here, but I can do moody. I can do different moods, but not necessarily the characters. So I'll have to work with my voice coach on that, Sunny. See, what I don't understand is on the one hand, people seem to be telling me, oh, just have one and a half minutes of this book, one and a half minutes of that book. And they, and then, and then they'll look at the kind of book they, they're, they're, they're doing and listen to that. On the other end, I'm told, well, they can tell in the first 10 seconds whether they like you. So mm -hmm. why don't you, you know, just have something that moves around? I mean, I will tell you as a television producer, we knew within not even 10 seconds whether it was gonna be a go or not. You know, and then, and then everything else after that just supported the opinion we already had. Hmm. I think that's good advice, Dave. I don't know. I mean, that kind, that kind I, of I don't know what that, but what does that mean then? What does that mean your demo sounds like? Quick, short spurts. Yeah, and I have a feeling that's exactly the opposite of what I'm gonna hear from whoever the special guest of, and next week I, and in my, my nonfiction narrators Zoom. Hmm. I mean, I, and I can pl play you what I, what I did, but I don't know. Play us what you did. At least I'll play some of it. Can you tell the members? I mean, it'll be story? interesting what they say, because I know that, so. you know, when we put shows together, people have the attention span, of course, of a gnat. And that, I'm told, will shift over into the demo reels is that you want it to be very quick. Yeah, well, this is not going to be that quick because they, you know, I tried to strike a balance. But here, this is what I did. Can you tell the members of the jury the name of the Murphy's son? She paused. There was a long, deafening silence in the courtroom. This is going to be devastating, I thought. I only know that it was the Murphy's son, she admitted. I don't know his first name. My hunch was right. She didn't even know Matt's name. All that money. All that work she had allegedly done as an expert witness studying and learning about this case. And she didn't care enough as a human being to know the name of the little boy who burned alive in front of his parents. He was just a statistic to you, wasn't he, ma'am? There is still time for you to step out fully equipped into your own work. There are still opportunities to make a difference in your life and within your world. You just need to take back your power. Remember, all the potential to be who you were created to be was already invested within you at your birth. Are you ready to stretch yourself and test those things that you believe about yourself deep down within? If so, then here is your second challenge. Take a step. However small, take one step, then two. Showing these films in America at the same time that German studios were systematically purging Jewish directors, actors, and technicians and removing their credits was a masterful act of Nazi deception. More abhorrent were the special Third Reich productions approved, financed, and sent over Germany's borders and across the Atlantic by Joseph Goebbels, head of what was called the Ministry of the Enlightenment of the People and Propaganda. Some of them were shown commercially in mainstream American theaters, not just in movie houses catering to German speakers. I think it came from two o'clock, the sergeant shouts over the sound of AK-47 fire. Not a hundred percent, but yeah, I've got muzzle flash. Third deck, farthest right window. The Marine sergeant's keen eyes have done a trick that most times is impossible. Find the enemy. The captain's body ramps up. Senses on high alert, totally focused on the task at hand. Fingers drop in sequence. Three, two, one. Anyway, that gives you an idea of 
how long I was doing stuff. Well, I think it sounds great. And maybe, maybe you're going to find out that you need it to be shorter. But exactly. I, That's what it sounds like you're saying. Yeah. But I, I could have kept listening for the whole thing. Because I think between each little blip that you did, which I liked, by the way, was a definite difference in how you were speaking. Yeah. You a different I, mood I on everyone. I didn't get bored. You had a good variety, a good selection. Mm hmm. So I'll find out. So far, it has, hasn't done anything for me, but then I don't have a marketing plan. Please, Tanya, <laughs> help me. Give me a marketing plan. Come on, Tanya. Bring your point, your point show, your- um, Do a PowerPoint, bring it, bring it to us. Your PowerPoint for us next week, okay? <laughs> hmm. Well, you have to let us know, Dave. Yeah, I'll, I'll report yeah. back to see what they say. Yeah, I'd be curious on that. Anybody else have a demo they want to share? Show? No, nobody. I don't have any either, so. I, I didn't, I honestly had never even heard of them until right now. So what what do you generally use them for? You give them to book, book publishers or something? Well, it goes on, yeah. your, it goes on your samples. It goes on your samples. Oh, it's just part and of I your samples? Yeah. yeah, and then on your um, on your webpage or however you want to promote yourself, you put it on there. So if people like your voice and a book that you've posted already on Audible, then they can go to your website and listen to your Yeah, stuff. well, I've, I've got my samples on there. I just didn't really understand there was something different. The demo was something different than the samples. Yeah, so like I wish Barbie was here tonight because she has a great demo and she's even added music to hers. Like you hear, you heard in Dave's how he had a little bleep in between each one. Barbie had like a uh, music, she had music in between and different kind of transitioning things. Hers was pretty jazzy. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we need to work on our demos people. I think that would be good. Maybe Dave can give us some feedback on his when he gets it changed, if he has to change it back something that we need to work towards. Even just showcasing your different voices too, Jenny, or your different moods and how you can kind of build on your characters that way. I put a couple of links in of somebody that kept coming up over and over when I was searching for demo tracks. And his name is... Oh. Demos That Rock is his website. And I think his name was like, I can't even think of it. Stupid thing. Let me see here. He had a like Bruce, somebody, something. Let me see. Anyways, if you go on there, he has like a ton of them on there that you can listen to. And his website, he interviews people on Facebook and, and does demos and voice work with them on Facebook. So people like come into his, his recording studio and works on their demos in his studio. And then he produces them. Chuck Duran. So, Chuck Duran. Yeah. Thank you. That's him. And he's kind of a crazy looking, he looks like Vince Neil from Motley Crue, but he's kind of a crazy looking guy. Anyways, it might be something worth checking out just to kind of see a but totally I see his different but, but, but I see his different examples and he has commercials, promos, animation, video mm -hmm. games, trailers, radio imaging. Well, oh, there's narration. They do have narration. That doesn't sound the like narration to me. No, I don't know. I don't know if they do book narration. I don't know either. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I had coaches. So somebody asked me affordable best value out of one to two hours for a coach. That is a pretty specific comment. I think you guys have to just do your digging when it comes to coaches. Like I'm going through Sunny. You, some of you already have coaches that work with you on certain things that you want work on. I don't know. I think it's a really personal thing. Like somebody posted on Facebook about 
they needed a very specific coach. And I was more broad spectrum about it. Like, how do you know what you don't know if you've never had a coach? So for me, I'm thinking, well, if you have one coach, then you'll get to know the things that you want to work on or things that you want to learn. And it can be very personal, but if you've never had a coach before, how do you know what kind of coach you need? I mean, you could, there's a website called VASTA, V-A-S-T-A dot org, and it stands for Voice and Speech Trainers Association. I actually belong to it. And you can go in and if, I mean, now with COVID, you can really hire people from anywhere you want, but typically you would go in to your area and find a coach there. Hmm. Um, but um, they have um, all kinds of coaches on it. And the coaches describe what their specialties are. So in your opinion, Sunny, would you, um, because you're my first coach and I don't have anything to compare it to at all. Mm -hmm. And so when we were talking and we were talking about things that I wanted to work on, we're planning around what you can see that I need to work on and what I think I need to work on. Mm -hmm. So in some of these Facebook groups, they're talking about, you need somebody very specific. So if you want to narrate, you need a narration coach. In my opinion, I said, well, if you don't know what the coach is about, how do you know they're not going to teach you something? Like to me, I think it would be valuable regardless if it's super specific. Well, if you were, I mean, if you were starting out, the, the people who were in VASTA really focus on the quality of the voice and the very basics and the things like if you want to expand your breath capacity. Okay. Once you get those basics, then quite frankly, you can, you can do internet searches for people who work specifically on certain things. They, they will begin to develop specialties. I mean, okay. my coach happens to, because of his training, we do both for narration and for voices and things. I mean, mm. if you find someone on Vasta who's been trained in the UK particularly, um, they offer a more, a, a greater spectrum of coaching, overall coaching, mm. because they, it's, it's um, an area where they really specialize in voice quality that then can be translated into any kind of thing you're wanting to work on. Because most of them come out of RADA or the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama where they're training actors, they're training business people, they're training voiceover artists. And, and they have degrees that allow them to cover Many that wide range assets yeah mm. okay that's really good knowledge thank you sunny for that um and then i just have the stu studio tour so people were asking about equipment specifically how did people try before they buy so maybe we can just kind of do a bit of a round table here and just gently talk about or give us your preliminary where you start equipment you started with to where you kind of are now if you had any kind of a transition between maybe your DAWs and your microphone or your interface. You want to just do a quick round table about that? I'll start. So I started with a, a Yeti microphone, USB, and I would plug it in through GarageBand actually, and I recorded directly through there. And then I would edit through GarageBand as well. <laughs> so very quickly, I found out that GarageBand does not do the technicality that I needed to get my sound to where I needed it to pass ACX. And then one of my friends wanted to get into voiceover work or narration. So I said to her, okay, well, I'll teach you what I know about voiceover. You teach me audacity. So then we started that way. So then I learned Audacity and then I upgraded my equipment to, I have a Shure SM7B mic 
I record into a Zoom H6 with an iCloud lifter. And then I use Audacity and GarageBand because I do podcasting. So I also put music and loops into my recording. Okay, who wants to go next? I'll go Norman? Next. Okay, go ahead, Tanya. Um, similar to you, I had the I had a Yeti blackout microphone. I was USB. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was just really struggling with getting good sound, but a lot of that also had to do with my space. Mine, so I yeah, kind of had too. a couple different things going on. So um, what I decided to do was I reconstructed my space and then I sent some voice samples out to have it analyzed till hmm. I got it to where it needs to be. So now that's in a better place. And then in working with my coach, because, you know, for the different things that I needed and the fact that I'm not very techie at all. I mean, this has been, a, as you heard me say earlier, just a real struggle trying to Learning balance curve. processing without over-processing and all those kinds of things. So what he recommended to me was a Rode NT1A mm. with the Scarlet interface. And when you put those together, what happens is you actually get a visual cue on the interface and when it's green, you're in the range that you've set that you want it to be. So you know mm. the whole time if you're in a good place with your voice, nice. it goes yellow if you start to get too hot and then it'll go to red if you're not in a good place. So for me, that's helped me get a better overall sound that, I mean, I'm still working with it, but. Right, right. So I think I'll have better success future sound files that I'm sending through Audacity than, than the files I'm trying to work with from the setup that I had before. So this new setup is new to me. So the jury's out, I'll let you know more, but I'm finding that those pieces of that make it better for me personally. Great, that's good. It's nice that when you can see your transition from where you came from, to even like the slightest difference. Like I was recording in my closet, like a lot of us do, and my sound was better there, but it was like awful. It was uncomfortable. I couldn't really, you know, get it to work properly. And so, yeah. So even just changing your room space makes such a big difference. It's funny how you learn these little things as you go. But boy, it takes a long time. <laughs> oh, I know. It's like, even like I'm 20 books in and then this book now I have like this great sequence. Like I wish I knew that before, you know, mm -hmm. who wants to go next? Um, well, I'm working on the uh, Focusrite uh, Scarlet Studio because mm -hmm. uh, it came with the mic, uh, the uh, external amp, everything like that. Uh, you can see I've set up a boom. Gotta love Amazon to get stuff like that. Totally. Um, was originally working with Adobe Audition because um, I, I know David will get this uh, back in the SoundForge stage, which was the original Adobe Audition uh, from radio. But what I found is my laptop just does not like carrying that much of a load. So I went to Audi um, moved down to Audacity because my laptop just couldn't keep up. Your fans much. were going or what? I just don't have enough uh, RAM on this. Oh, okay. To run it. Got you. It just bogged down the computer and I'd start recording and it would get five minutes in and go. And then sit there for two hours before I could close anything. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we can't do that. Right. So uh, as much as I love Audition, uh, I'm actually finding Audacity uh, is a lot simpler to use. Um, I mean, if I'm editing music files and such, yeah, I want Audacity, but for narration, or sorry, addition, but yeah. for narration, Audacity really feels a lot more flexible. Good. You know? Good. Sunny, do you want to share your recording space? Well, I call my recording space the rabbit hutch because like <laughs> you, in, in a closet and and I'm just starting out on on all of this. Um, I did end up getting the Rode NT1A and then the uh, Focusrite, which seems to be good for the for beginning. 
Mm -hmm. um, the, the uncomfortableness of the space is probably my biggest challenge right now, that and learning all the technical part. But mm -hmm. I, I don't have a before and a later yet. <laughs> Not yet, hey? No, I'm just, we're, I'm we're just in the same beginning spot there, the technology. Mm -hmm. Dave, what do you record on? Um, uh, I asked an audio engineer, um, he's married to a friend of ours, and he said, why don't you do this? I said, okay. I mean, he <laughs> gave me, gave me different, different price ranges and things, but, um, I've got an AKG C214 microphone because I decided most of my money should go into the microphone. Mm-hmm. So that was like a $400 microphone. Hmm. Um, I've got the Focusrite Scarlett interface. Uh, I use Studio One. Uh, I've got two PCs. So I record on one PC on Studio One, take the file over to my other PC and edit it on Audacity. And the only thing that really drives me crazy about Audacity, and Norman, you probably are familiar with this from Radio 2, is Audacity is a, is a, is a destructive editor. So that if you take out this much, but then you decided that you wanted to add back that part, you can't do it because you've already mm -hmm. done the edit but there are other programs that I wish I'd rather use. So it's like, you know, now I, I, need, I, took, I really cut off that S. I'm gonna just slide that over. And there it is, because it remembers. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't remember. GarageBand I, remembers so, as well. They, they, yeah. So you record and do the basic edit in Studio One and then do the mastering in Audacity? Is that what I'm hearing? No, I do all of the editing. I don't. I do very little of the editing on Studio One unless I've had so many multiple takes on something that I just want to, you know, there's mm. 40 seconds of junk or a minute and a half of junk that I want to get rid of. Then I'll do some editing on in Studio One in my little studio. Mm. But other than that, then I just put it on a thumb drive and take it over across <laughs> across the room 10 feet and and do it on a different PC so that the one PC I have in there is only only for um, recording recording uh, my raw audio and nothing else is there I have don't I, I will occasionally open a browser if I suddenly have a question about about pronouncing something, hmm. but I don't want to use it on anything else. I don't want to download anything on it. It's just for my raw sound. Hmm. I'm not suggesting it, it's just what I do. I don't, I don't know if it's good or bad. You not store anything in the cloud, Dave? Uh, I do put things in a Dropbox, yeah. Why wouldn't you just use Dropbox instead of your thumb drive to walk it over to your other machine? because it takes a while to I, it upload? takes a while to upload to Dropbox at least in my experience hmm. this seemed much faster hmm. plus I've got a backup <laughs> you do have a backup if I Anybody ever else? have to I can go back to the I mean these thumb drives are so inexpensive it's like okay and they've got a date on them. Mm -hmm. The file has a date on it. I can look back and find it. That's true. I want to, but. What about you, Carrie? What do you record on? Well, what I did when I was getting into this is I watched on YouTube hours and hours <laughs> of Booth Junkie and Podcastage so that I could see them do all of the, this mic, you know, Oh, yeah, compare, 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 compare. So 
what w- was fascinating to me on both Podcastage and uh, Booth Junkies is when they did this Stellar X2 microphone versus the TLM 103. Mm. And everybody did it and everybody had an opinion. Does the Stellar X2 sound like th- this? Does it sound like the Neumann? And so I listened and I looked at the price of the Stellar X2 and I decided, why do I want to spend my life wondering if the Stellar X2 really does sound like the Neumann? So I went and I was, I'm a big, as you might notice, a Craigslist junkie. I found a Neumann TLM 103 on Craigslist. And I said, you know, why wonder if, if this other thing sounds like it, why don't I just get it? So I use, and you can see my setup here. Mm-hmm. I have um, in the cave before I move into my whisper room, mm-hmm. I have, I use a MacBook Air and I use um, mm-hmm. on the MacBook, uh, I, I write to, because I don't have enough memory, I write to an SSD drive. So it's the solid state drive is very nice. Fast. It uses um, one, one of these like lightning. Oh, mm-hmm. I just lost you. Hold on. And what I have set up also, I have on um, this is the road um, boom arm. I use the headphones recommended from Booth Junkie, and they are the uh, Sennheiser H nice. Pros. Yeah. Um, because you of- would like those, Dave. I don't know what you use for headphones, but you would like the Sennheiser because it's a mid, uh, a yeah, mid like range them. sound. I like them. And so, mm-hmm. like I said, so I use um, the Chaotica eyeball for uh, because my this cave that I'm in is yeah. actually much longer then it is wide and mm. I didn't want to in that direction have echo. Right. And so inside of it, I use. The you even have mount. a, um, a shock. Oh yeah. Nice. I do. I have a shock mount. I yeah. have the uh, Neumann shock mount. Um, so that's, that's my setup. And I use uh, um, the Microsoft, I have a Surface Pro to read my scripts, but I'm not reading it off that. I'm reading it off. I have a second monitor. Wow. So, I just use my iPad. Yeah. I like a I, second monitor. I think that I'm getting noise from the monitor Ooh. Um, because before I used it, I wasn't getting this uh, hum or something. Yeah. And now I'm picking it up. But what the, tr- the trouble with this, the Neumann microphone is it is so sensitive, it picks up everything. And so I was going out of my mind this weekend because neighbors were playing loud music, really loud music. And I was kept complaining, we need to call the police, we need to do this, the music is so loud. (laughs) What I realized is that I was in here with my headphones on and I was hearing it amplified through Mm -hmm. the microphone. Mm -hmm. It wasn't to everybody else, it wasn't as crazy loud as I was hearing it all weekend. Are your, are, is your headphones open back? They're not. Are they closed? Huh? They're, they're closed, but the, the neighbor's mo- uh, music was just that loud. I right. Mean, and other people ended up calling the police. I, did, I didn't. But, mm-hmm. um, so that's the equipment that I, oh, and I use, again, the Focusrite uh, 2i2, which was because of the uh, booth junkies. And I, yeah, I like his, I like his, uh, his reviews hey yeah hmm so yeah i forgot about my headphones these ones um are maze m-e-z-e and i got them for like a couple hundred bucks on a mass drop Have you guys ever done that so what they do is they want to launch a new product so they put it out there and say okay we're gonna we need a thousand people to buy these and we'll sell them to you for 200 bucks or 300 bucks instead of the retail at 600 so they can do a mass drop and get them out there so for reviews and stuff and they're totally totally awesome headphones they have like a leather adjustable 
strap here and they're really, really, really quiet. So there's no squeaking or anything. Your ears don't sweat or anything in them. Yeah, they're really nice. And you can, um, you can increase the volume here just in your headphones instead of whatever you're using them through your microphone or whatever. Yeah. What's, what's your headphones, Dave? Uh, Sony MDR 7506. Hmm. That's yes. a lot of numbers on there. Yeah. I don't and know. They're good. You like them? They're good. They're, they're very comfortable. That's all I, all I wanted. Yep. What about you, Jenny? What's your gear? Uh, yeah, well, I'm kind of like, I don't know if it was sunny, someone was saying earlier, I'm, I'm still on the before stage. I don't have much to boast about. I've got just a basic USB microphone and yeah. my, uh, my studio is my spare bedroom with lots of blankets and towels and things. And just, just getting started. Good. Yeah, it's so neat when you start out and then you learn like just one little thing and just makes just this huge difference. And then every day you just learn and learn. I don't know, Terry, if you want to um, partake or not, but do you have anything you want to share? Or are you just listening in tonight? Maybe just listening in. Okay. Um, and then I only had one other thing. So Karen Cummings, if you don't know her name, you really should because she is integral for ACX. She is the creator of Narrator's Roadmap. I'm going to put a link in the chat here. She is hosting a webinar for ACX narration, audio book, everything. She is so knowledgeable. She's so humble. She's also a narrator. She's also an author. And I think it's Thursday night this week. And she is running, now that I took my headphones off, my ears are itchy. She's running um, a webinar I don't know how long it is but go to this link and you guys can sign up I think it's like 50 bucks or something like that for the one session uh, it's worth it will be worth going to you could also sign up I think for five of the webinars for like 300 bucks or something like that but if you want to go and just check out the first one I would recommend it because she is just so committed to this industry and she just gives so much of her personal time and creating narrator's roadmap and creating all these links and creating all these, you know, peripherals that we get to use and um, just have at our have at our fingertips. So if you guys go, let me know because I'm not sure if I can make it on Thursday night, but um, if you go let me know. Check it out. And newbies like Norman, you'd probably find it very interesting because you're kind of getting into the whole ACX platform and you would probably like what you would find out there. And she gets into, I'm assuming she'll get into like LibreVox and Learning Alley and these other platforms that you can just volunteer your time to narrate and get experience on. Yeah. Okay. I uh, the series, I see the series includes Sean Pratt on marketing your narrations on the 16th. Oh, are you looking in there? Oh, thanks, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, uh, we missed him on the second. Yeah, I, I see we missed them on the second. Narration. I just saw that, so I thought I would bring it up tonight for us. Is there anything anybody else wants to share? That's it for my minutes or my notes. I, I do have one question. Once your book 
hits or your books hit ACX and then or hit Audible. What do you do to market them yourself? How do you use the promo codes? So what I do is you're asking me specifically, Carrie. Um, what I do is I I use a program called Adobe Spark. And if you're an Adobe user on any level, you can add Adobe Spark to it for like a few bucks more a month. And, oh, hi, Terry. And what it does is it allows you to create um, a marketing um, like you can create your own cover art. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you what I, how I do it. If I can. So in here, I just have a folder of cover art. So I go in and I create, and those of you who follow me on Instagram. So I go in and I create cover art for every book I do every podcast episode. Um, let me see if I can get to one of my books here. Hang on, let me go back. Um, so like, for example, here's one of my books, Ghost of Me. And I actually took her book and did like five or six. Here's another book, Wicca Magic. And I kind of tag them. And I put different notes in them and stuff on my cover art. And then I just use this as my marketing piece to be able to push it through Instagram to Facebook. And I find it, I mean, it's not like a huge marketing thing that I do, but it's neat because it gets out there and I get authors reaching out to me. My author shares it with her group. Um, and I just build off that and I write like little, little notes from the chapters on them and little scripts that I get from it. This one was actually my first one that they posted and they put my name on the cover. I was like, oh my God, I was like, felt so great. And then I, I, I reached out to this author, Eileen Watkins, and I interviewed her for my podcast about her book and she well we both cried and during the podcast because we talked about horses and horses go to slaughter and all the stuff she yeah she's very knowledgeable and her book is about reboot ranch and it's a rescue place for horses that are no longer wanted or needed or whatever anyway so I kind of pair my authors with my podcast after I narrate their book and then I can bring them on my show and promote it that way. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Like if you can create something that sort of reflects your brand or how you want to promote your works and you can do that with, you know, just the cover of the book and taking some lines out of it that are captivating, some script and just promote it. And then in my write up, when I write it up on Instagram, I put in there like promo codes. If you want free book, reach out to me. And then I just send promo codes to people. And I usually have like one or two people reach out to me and want a promo code. And then I send them unless they're Canadian, which I only found out when I did research for this session that I can get Canadian promo codes. So I'll do that now instead of just US. So Terry, do you want to share your studio with us or your setup? No. Okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. Mine, mine's very similar to everybody else. Um, several people that were talking about with the, uh, the road NT1 and the, the solo, whatever interface, I'm still like, I'm so new at this. It's <laughs> taking me a while to get going. Oh, that's okay. We're glad that you're here though. Everybody offers something and um, when you get oh, yeah. your, I learn a lot. Good. Good. Thanks. Um, you're welcome. Does anybody have any other questions or anything they want to share? That's all I have for tonight.
Did you do your 100th podcast? Not yet. I just looked and it's not posted. It's not posted yet. I still have a few people. So what I'm doing, for those of you who don't know, is I'm launching my 100th podcast episode. And in that episode, I reached out to people in this group and I reached out to my community and I had all these people um, respond and share what they've learned after doing 100 of blank. So I have like a musician, I have a radio guy, Dave, I have um, Sunny contributed for her production, her producing history. I have my auntie, she's been a nurse for like 30, 40 years. So she contributed like all these different people who, oh, and like narrators, of course, I've had um, Emily Lawrence came on, I have, um, Another narrator that I follow, uh, actually several. I have like two or three narrators that have contributed after like 100 or 200 or 400 books like Emily. Um, my husband, he's, he's taken like 50,000 photographs. So I asked him if he'd like to be on my show. He says, no, because I don't want anybody looking at my photos. <laughs> I recorded him though, so he's going to be on there whether he likes it or not. Yeah, so if you guys have done a hundred of something, maybe it's being a chef or being a nurse or Terry contributed selling a hundred, over a hundred homes, um, reach out to me. I don't know what you guys do for a living, but maybe you've done something a hundred times and whatever you did and how it changed you how it changed you inside your body and how it changed your outlook on life, on human beings, on travel. Reach out to me and then you can do a little, I know you all know how to record. So you can do a three minute record, three minutes or less and send it to me and I'll add you to my, my lineup. Anyways, thanks everybody. Nice seeing you all. It's good to be back. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, you're welcome. And um, thank you so much for doing this. So Yes, thank you, Valerie. You're welcome, everybody. I love it. So if you guys have questions, please send them to me and then we can keep it going and keep learning. Try out some new tips and tricks that you've learned and then share them with us next time. Okay. Stay warm, Canadians. Stay warm. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Val. Thanks. See you.